Hi, I'm Mary from the Maryland Room, and this is a Frederick County Public Library's Genealogy Moment. Probably when most of us look back on our lives, there are defining moments. At the time, we may not have recognized their importance, but those situations, those things that happened that really changed us in some way and led us down the path that our future would hold. For me, looking back, I find that one of those defining moments was when I received the World Almanac as a Christmas present. I loved that World Almanac, and I spent lots of time going through it just for fun, looking things up, and really using it as a reference tool. I should have known then that being a reference librarian was in my future, no matter what I may have thought at that moment in time. What I'd like to do today is to talk about almanacs. If you go to the online catalog for Frederick County Public Libraries and search, you will find 12 different items, um, 12 different sets, some of them are not individual items, that deal with almanacs. Some of them are almanacs, three of them are sources that talk about almanacs or the writing of almanacs, the construction of almanacs. An almanac, according to Introduction to Reference Work by William Katz. Um, this was the reference book that I used in library school. And before you ask, yes, I do have all of my books from library school. If I haven't mentioned, I also still have that World Almanac from the 1970s as well. But according to Mr. Katz here, an almanac is a compendium of useful data and statistics relating to countries, personalities, events, subjects, and the like. It is a type of specific entry encyclopedia stripped of adjectives and adverbs and limited to the skeleton of information, which is why they're smaller than encyclopedias. Encyclopedias, as it's saying here, have more words, um, but almanacs tend to get right, right to the point. Almanacs are very similar to yearbooks. One of the major ways that almanacs differ from yearbooks is that almanacs will often have weather information. So it'll often give predictions what the weather is going to be like a year from now. Will there be snow? Will there be rain? Will it be an incredibly hot summer? But also they include information about the sun and the moon. So they will talk about the aspects of the moon, the transit. They will talk about when the sun's going to rise and where the sun's going to set and in what sign in the zodiac the planets will be in at that time. And again, they will predict predict weather. Um, right here, we are here in the 300s where you're going to find not all of it, but the bulk of the almanacs that the Maryland Room has in its collection. Right up here, we have our Baltimore Sun Almanac, which goes back to um, the 1870s and forward around to around the 1920s. Um, lots of newspapers would publish almanacs. That wasn't an unusual thing for a newspaper to do. Um, they would give them to the subscribers as well. And in there, you will find a wide variety of information. You will find information again about the weather. Sometimes also you'll find important events listed. You'll find necrology who are important people who died or people of note who died in that year. So as a genealogist, why should you care about almanacs? Well, the dead people listed in the almanacs may be of interest to you, but also almanacs, again, provide context. One more source that gives us context. So if you looked through the almanac for a particular year, let's say you're interested in 1909 or 1865 or 1885, and if you read through the almanac, not only would you get an idea of what the weather might have been like, but also, and some almanacs are known to be very, very accurate in their predictions, but also you'll find out other things that were going on in that year or were going on in the year before. You will also find information about folklore. You will find information, um, sometimes, you know, funny things, uh, which usually we don't up today. We won't find very funny, but there'll be jokes. There'll be stories. Um, and also sometimes there's historical information. So um, hey, we have a Hagers, very nice set of Hagerstown almanacs. If you didn't know this, the Hagerstown almanac is one of the longest running almanacs in the country, and again, known for its accuracy, we still get the Hagerstown Almanac. Um, this is the Hagerstown Almanac from 2020, and it's the 224th year of continuous publication. We get people who come in to look the weather up in the Hagerstown Almanacs. Um, sometimes there's also, besides the Almanac being in the Maryland Room, sometimes you also will find the Almanac at the reference desks in the branches as well, not just, just isolated here in the Maryland Room. But lots of kind of weird little information you can find in almanacs. Um, our older Hagerstown almanacs go back to 1840. Obviously, this had been rebound at some point in time. But in the 1840 almanac, there's a write-up about Lowell, about the Lowell factory girls, 
which you may recall from history class in high school, um, that was the beginning of industrialization in New England, or part of the beginning of industrialization in New England. And the effort was made to hire factory girls, to hire farm girls from the immediate area um, in order to, well, they, they came cheaper sometimes, though, though they say here the salary isn't quite as, inex as cheap as one would thought compared to the men who were working in the mill. But you could definitely, during that time period, hire women cheaper. And also it was a way to give these, um, these farm girls, they, they came to the big city of Lowell in Massachusetts in order to work. And the idea was that they would not work there forever. So it was a, a kind of an isolated time in their lives. Um, they would not work for factory workers for forever. They would work in the factory. They'd make some money to help their families out on the farm. And eventually they would marry and leave. Um, but here, this look right up about Lowell is kind of interesting because it's going on about how fabulous the Lowell factory is. And then here, the result shows that six of the females out of 10 enjoy better health than before being employed in the mills. So it's kind of the, the, the propaganda, not to say this is not true, that was pushed out about the Lowell Mill. So if you picked a particular year and read through it, you would find out, you know, not necessarily everything that happened in the world or in the country at that time, but you would find information relevant to a study of that time period. So again, it can be really interesting if you're looking at a particularly important date in the history of your family, or if you're writing a narrative, you're writing a narrative history, you want to add some more context. You know, if you went through the almanacs, it would give you more to work from. And even if you did, were going to write historic fiction, even from scratch, or sometimes people write historic fiction based on the lives of their families, it can give you more information. Um, this is really interesting, at least to us in the Maryland. So this is from December of that year, and it gives a list of roads. So the roads from Baltimore to Wheeling, from Wheeling to Kentucky, from Hagerstown to Winchester, Staunton, just it lays them all out and gives the mileage between them. Um, that's always of interest to people who are looking at migration patterns. Also, people just interested in road history. There are lots of people who are interested in road history. Um, this also gives a list of the courts and when the courts met. So you never know how some of that could be useful to you. And also, you never know if you're just reading through an almanac um, what you might find of interest. So, you know, we have these Baltimore Sun Almanacs. We have the Hagerstown Almanac. We have something called the Frederick Almanac that ran from 1894 to 1913. And then the golden years of Frederick Almanacs are the almanacs that were published by the Frederick News Post. They were first published in 1921, and they ran through 1943. They stopped being published in 1943 because, as, as cited in the newspaper, no yearbook this year, on account of the scarcity of paper and a shortage of help, think in mind World War II, the News Post would be unable to issue a yearbook and an almanac for 1944. This would be the first break in the publication of the News Post yearbook since it was started many years ago. Um, I think I said yearbooks and almanacs are, are very closely related. Um, so we love our News Post almanacs slash yearbooks. They're very, very exciting. And if you look at the newspapers of that time period, so this is an ad for the News Post yearbook in 1920. So this is an ad for what's going to be published in the coming year, an advertisement. We're publishing a yearbook now. If you subscribe to the paper, you get the free yearbook. And it even says, while they last, before they're all gone, come in and get your News Post yearbook. So it says these yearbooks are almanacs, carefully prepared. Other features of the almanacs are, besides sunset, Sunrise, moonrise, moonset, total eclipses, those things we talked about before, those things that are related to the, to the natural world. But other features of the almanac, directory of Frederick City and Frederick County officials, census figures, which also will be divvied up between race as well, votes in presidential election, name of postmasters, legal holidays, business law, weights and measures. Um, we may care less about the weight, weights, weights and measures. Um, banking law and practice, care of horse, sheep, cattle, poultry. Um, a doctor's page, first aid. You also will find recipes in almanacs as well. It's a little bit of everything that you may be interested in or you may not be interested in, but a little bit of everything that was relevant to that time period. Um, when you look at it and find the the recipes and also the recommendations of things relating to home medical care, they have kind of a Martha Stewart kind of feel to it, um, kind of Martha's good things, those things that are relevant, those things that are going to make your life easier. We have, um, I mentioned David Wallace before, Mr. Wallace is our indexing volunteer, and he has gone through and he has indexed 
the almanacs from 1922 to 1943. These are our indexes. And what he was pulling from, because what's particularly important to us and why these are kind of the glory days of almanacs here in the Maryland room, is that they list important local events of the year previously. So if you make your way through the almanacs, I think the first year they didn't do it, but after that they did, and you'll find many pages. So here, for example, we are in July of 1923, and it talks about, it mentions several people who've died, but also the Frederick Missionary Conference of the Reformed Church to open at Hood College with more than 100 delegates present. Thousands of people visited Frederick to visit John Robinson's circus. County commissioners will not allow Soldiers Memorial to take the place of the fountain in Courthouse Park. So, it, again, if you care about a particular year or you just care or are interested in Frederick history, and you will find almanacs like this in other parts of the country as well, if you just make your way through it. I mean, this really is, while you can't you know, take these home and, put, and read them in the bathtub, sometimes they are very good bathtub read. So when we open up again, you may find of interest to come into the Maryland and sit down and and maybe read a year or two. The same way that we have patrons who come in and read the newspapers, you can come in and read the almanac. Um, here, unfortunately, on June 4th, um, three horses unfortunately burned to death in the rear of the residence of Mr. Byerly. And then more than 200 invitations were issued to Tumberland owners of Frederick and Washington County to attend a meeting at the courthouse to discuss the forest fire situation. So it's all these little tidbits of history. Um, so again, you can just read through them, but again, Mr. Wallace has indexed them. And you will also find a list of a necrology of important people, of prominent people who died that year. And don't underestimate whether or not someone in your family may have been considered a prominent or someone of note in the community. Um, while we, did, Mr. Wallace did not index those individual people, again, Good practice might be if you, you know, I, I mentioned before kind of a list of things you should do every year. Um, we'd maybe at one point in time come in and just kind of read through these almanacs and do see if you find references to people in your family. Now, you probably have other references to their death. You, you may not find somebody in here who you're who you care about from your family or related to your family in some ways, and you may already have their obituary or know where they're buried. But it may be interesting to know that they were a person of note and also to see what the little term is that comes after, because usually it's, you know, it's Bob Jones of, of the court or um, Susan Gray, a member of Saint of All Saints Episcopal. You know, so it may be useful to take a look and see how they're referenced. Fascinating stuff. Um, so besides the, oh, one other thing, too, about the almanac. So this is the 1943 almanac, um, and in the section that talks about things that went on that year, besides the Frederick County death roll, um, chances of legit long longevity better in Frederick, but Negro population declines. And it talks about how in the census, um, the population of African Americans in Frederick declined that year, and also the number of foreign-born white in the county also declined slightly in the 10-year period. So actually, if you just take a look at that one little section, that's telling a story about what Frederick County was like during that time period, and you could certainly take that and then do some research and probably, you know, construct a really, a really interesting paper on that angle about what was going on in Frederick at time just using that information and going forward. So besides the almanacs that we have here, again, we have the Baltimore Sun almanac pieces, parts of that. We have um, selections from the Hagerstown almanac, and we still do collect that today. We have a full run of the Frederick News Post almanac, and also um, the uh, News Post about 10 years ago also published a weather almanac, which was different than the, the yearbook almanac that they have from the 20s into the 40s that have so much information. But also we have some other information here about almanacs. So we have a paper that someone wrote a few years back about farming lore, farming lore and almanacs in Appalachia. So this would be an interesting read because it's going to be talking about the farmer's use of the almanacs, looking at it for the weather and also for the sun and the moon and how it guided their farming practices throughout the year. And of course, we have here in the Maryland room works about um, Benjamin Banneker, uh, Maryland's first, they, like, they say he's Maryland's first, well, actually says he's America's first black man of science. Um, Benjamin Banneker, who lived over in Owella, which is right across the river from Ellicott City, um, and a very important astrologer, not astrologer, astronomer of his time period. And he did write an almanac, which was very well thought of. Um, so again, the life of Benjamin Banneker, the first African-American man of science, one of Frederick, well, not just Frederick, one of Maryland's most famous um, 18th century citizens. And then finally, 
what I'd like to mention is we have sources here like the Cracker Barrel, which is a general work that talks about folklore um, and tradition in, in throughout our history. And he says in here, I still pour over the old almanacs, and there isn't one that doesn't provide a bit of useful information. So that's it, almanacs. You're never going to find one that doesn't provide some useful piece of information. And when you go back and look at the almanacs for those communities you're interested in, if you go through enough of them, you're going to find some useful information that may help you supplement your genealogy, that may add more context, again, to your genealogy, and may allow you to better understand the world in which your patrons lived. Thank you for your time here today. I look forward to seeing you at some point in time when the Merriman open, opens up again and you can make your way through our Baltimore Sun Almanacs, our Hagerstown Almanacs, or our Frederick News Post Almanacs. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. And if you'd like to get a copy of Mr. Wallace's indexes of the News Post Almanacs from 1922 to 1943, all you have to do is email us at mdroom at fcpl.org. Thank you for your time here today, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.